Okay, so are you ready to tune the model? Because this is going to be the last thing that we're going to do to try to get a better model or try to get the best model that we can. What we did so far was to create some new features, we cleaned our data, and then we tried a couple of different algorithms to try to find the best performing one. So the next thing, or the last thing actually, uh, that we're going to do is try to tune the hyperparameters of the model that we're working on. So I said before, I am choosing to work with the random forest one. So what we're going to do is basically, there are settings for the random forest algorithm and we're trying to find the, just the right setting that will give us the best performance or a good performance. So the first thing that we want that you want to do is basically go to the documentation for the algorithm and try to see, okay, which ones of those do I want to work with? So, you know, you have number of estimators and then criterion, max depth, mean sample split. So it's obviously we don't really understand by just reading their names what they mean. So I would really encourage you to go and read and understand what they mean and try to understand how they would affect it, how they would affect the performance. And uh, another thing that we mentioned before was to come up with some values for these uh, parameters because, okay, max depth, how, how deep should it be? I have no idea. So one thing you can do, you know, is it going to be 10? Is it going to be 100 or is a thousand a normal value to give it? We don't know. Or, you know, 0.1 could be. So the thing that we want to do here is basically also look at the default ones. So the default one for here is 100. So probably it means it needs to be around at that level, you know. Um, so for the other sort of parameters, it gives you the options or, you know, so this is none. So apparently max depth, if it's none, it means that it goes as far as it can. So anything lower than that number would be um, a limiting parameter. So just going over the parameters and seeing, you know, what value I can give them and which ones I want to work with. So that's, that's what documentation is for. Then I go back to my notebook. So here I just noted down everything that I wanted to try. So, you know, I want to see the, I want to turn the boost staff option on and off and I want to see which one is better. I want to do the minimal samples, uh, leaf one, and then try different values there to see which ones are better. So these are my options, but we can't really try all of them. So if you ask why, so here is my options. we we'll see all of them here. So if I want to try all of them, that's going to be a lot of training of models. So if I try every single combination here, and if I didn't uh, calculate that incorrectly, it's going to be around 9,000 uh, calculations. And if you did it yourself, you probably seen in the previous section when the model training, only training a random forest already takes like around 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how fast your computer is. So it's very tricky to try every single one of them. And that's why we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is a randomized search. So what it is, is basically you or the algorithm or the randomized search function chooses a random combinations, the number of random combinations that you give it, and then it will give you the performances. So how it does is basically I'm telling it, okay, I want to work with a random forest. Here is the random forest regressor. And here is the grid of everything that I want. These are the values that I want you to consider. And out of them, I want you to choose 10 different combinations and report to me the, the performances of those different combinations of parameters. So, um, but we're not actually only running the algorithms once. So as you see here, there's something called CV and we also give it a number CV here. And what that stands for is cross validation. So cross validation is basically a way for us to uh, validate that our model is stable. And what it does is basically it divides the data into different chunks. So in this case, three different chunks and it uh, reports back the performance on each different chunk of data so that we'll be able to see, okay, was the performance more or less same on all of these three so that I can understand, okay, this is the performance, more or less performance that this model will give it to me, give to me. But if one performance is very high, the other one is very low, 
that might mean that there is something wrong with your data. And, you know, because th the cross-validation shows us performance is based on different chunks of data. And if one chunk of data gives you very high performance and the other chunk gives you very low performance, that might mean that there's something wrong with your data. So um, this process takes a long time. So that's why I've already run it. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second. But basically what we did is we have our random forest regressor. We're using the same data as before. And we want it to choose 10 different combinations of these guys. And we want it to do cross validation on three different chunks of data. So let's take a look at the results actually. So here are the results. We have 10 of them. And this is the mean score that they gave us. And this is the three uh, different chunks of data scores. So basically, you know, the first option that it tried gave it a this um, score and then the second chunk gave this score and the third chunk gave this score and their mean is this. So basically what we want to look at here is the mean score. We want it to be good. So for example, this is not very good. 0.04 is not very good performance. But at the same time, we don't want the standard deviation to be very high. We want it to be very low so that you know we'll understand that it's not really deviating a lot. So of course, here, you know, as I told you, we have 9,000 options of different combinations of parameters, but we only tried 10 of them. So you might say, okay, but is this enough to really find the best one? And it's not. So what you normally do uh, in this case to tune the model and find the exact best um, combination of parameters is after you do this, after you do the randomized search uh, of different combinations, you let's say you find the first one okay the best one what it is what is it this one okay that means that you are closer to the best values here so you try to search around them and see you know maybe a little bit lower than 300 maybe a little bit lower than 1800 maybe they will they will give us the better performance so um, and then you can do a grid search and what a grid search is is basically it works the same way you give it the options that it, you want it to work on but then it runs every single combination that it can possibly do between those. So that's why you don't want to give it like 10 different options for max depth, but you want to give it one or two different options or maybe three different options for max depth so that it can do the combinations and then try them on a random forest. So uh, let's see what our best one is and then let's see how we're going to go forward from there.